Yes, so uh, this is part two of our tutorial. Uh, unfortunately, Blender crashed on me and I couldn't recover uh, the part we had ended up. And this is where I, I uh, ended up here. So uh, that's why I recommend you always save a backup copy. You can see I'm saving two copies here. Maybe let me uh, even add a third one uh, so that I can always have a, uh, something to, uh, to come back to. So let's continue uh, by redoing this area here. So again, just extrude. Uh, this just do this a little bit faster since we have already gone through uh, the process so just extrude along this curve of course you can use a curve a curve object uh, for this part but uh, uh, because I want to have control over the topology uh, that's why I'm choosing to just do this manually so let me just again go to the right view and start pushing these vertices uh, to follow that uh, the, uh, the shape we're going for. Uh, you will notice that I'm only pushing these in the Y direction and no other direction. Uh, so, And the reason I'm doing that uh, is because I don't want to uh, remove, I just want them to, to be aligned uh, with this uh, view. You can always find a different reference image uh, for this, uh, but I think we are good here. So now we can use the fill grid uh, option to fill in uh, this gap here. And uh, the way that works, you just select two edge loops. So for this, I'm just going to select this here, up to here, and then this up to here. I can see this is a complete single loop, so I need to have somewhere I can deselect this here, this vertex, and this here, so that we have two separate edge loops. Otherwise, if you just have one edge loop selected, one single edge loop selected, it will not work. So hit F3 and then type in grid fill, and I should fill in your grid like that. You can even look at uh, some of the look at I'm not, I'm not sure what these options do I uh, haven't ever used them before but uh, yeah let's just go with that okay I think I need to have a better selection the grid uh, the grid field usually works better if you have the same number of vertices selected on one loop and uh, if you have the same number of vertices on on both edge loops so let's see what we have here so this is um, 13 vertices and 11 vertices so let's see where we can add a few extra vertices here if I add an extra vertex here maybe slide this up a bit so we would have this is 12 versus 13. And maybe let me just dissolve one of the vertex there so that we have 12 by 12. Now, so if I select this and this, you can see it's now a single edge loop. So what I'm going to do is just going to select these vertices, these edges and delete them for now. Now, if I select this, you can see we still have 12 vert vertices and then of vats as well on this side so I can select both of them like that and then do a grid fill and then connected by wire boundaries oh I think they have to be connected so I'm just going to connect them like this like this but uh, because when I select the both edge loops I still I'll just have one edge loop selected and if I try to do a grid fill right now, ah, it's actually working. It's actually working, but uh, not exactly how I wanted it to work. So what I'm going to do is uh, just divide this and this so that I have an extra edge loop, uh, an extra vertex there. So when I select here and here, I'm not, I don't have two vertices selected or two edge loops selected so I can try a grid fill again and uh, that looks better much better I can sli start sliding these vertices around 
so that they follow the contour just a little bit better. Maybe push these vertices out a bit. I'm using out S to push them. And uh, now I can just start moving these around so that I get uh, the shape I want. So, so that I get a, a smooth a flow of uh, these edge loops. Now what I might do, um, I want this vertex here, this edge loop here, uh, to go and curve around this side and maybe should be the same, but it should be the same edge loop that goes around uh, this side. And uh, there, there is an easier way to do this. I can select everything, hit I, insert, and I uh, can easily get that edge loop like that. Now what I can do, I, se I would select this middle, uh, middle edge loop uh, that has been added slide it into uh, the mirror and then delete it, delete uh, the, those faces. But uh, now we have a few issues. Uh, we need to do some cleaning here. So I think I can merge these vertices like that. And uh, we also have a few issues here. So I think I can select these edges like that, dissolve them using Ctrl X. And uh, let me also slide this edge loop so that it's not intersecting with the other edge loop. Merge. So what you're trying to do here, or what I'm trying to do here is uh, look at the edge loops that I have and uh, see where I can improve uh, the edge flow see I'm, I think I have too many edges going on here so what I can do I can remove this using Ctrl X to dissolve it and slide this to be in the middle like that again you're trying to just have a better edge flow and have all the the edges you have follow the the curvature or flow of uh, your chair uh, let me see let me look at this uh, we have a few issues going on here uh, that we need to fix. We might need to fix. I think we can use an, an extra uh, resolution there. So I'm just going to remove that. Again, what I'm trying to do is uh, make sure that uh, all the vertices or edge loops that I have kind of follow the contour of my chair. So basically, that's what I'm doing. See, have this edge loop there. Can remove that. I also think this can be made to this, so I can remove this edge loop because there's a, there was some bit of congestion there, so I can uh, push them to be a bit like that. like how this is cutting through here so uh, I can connect this vertex to go directly to this and uh, remove that again we're trying to maintain a proper edge flow here and, uh, this can be slided down here connected to this uh, the one I'm, join I'm joining this this to let me turn on my screen keys here I'm selecting an, a vertex there and then a vertex using shift and then J to connect them and uh, 
removing the extra edge loop. Uh, this is also not needed, but uh, this can be slided up. I'm trying to reduce the congestion of vertices, especially where we don't need them. And uh, where they are also breaking uh, the flow of the, the edge loops. Something like that. And see how this is creating this diagonal thing. Okay, uh, hopefully I was saving. Let me, I'm using Blender 2.82 and I think it's crashing quite a, quite a lot for some reason. So let me switch to Blender 2.81, which is a more stable version. So uh, so let's see, open, open chair. I think this is it. Yeah, so let me also just save over the other versions I have. And then let's continue with this. Make sure this is recording. Push these down. Okay, now we can go to this side and just make sure that uh, everything is flowing the way we expect it to flow. And uh, if we look at this, you can see how the chair now looks. And uh, I'm good with that. So you can also see uh, we have a different shape here that is facing directly to the camera. So I can just uh, select maybe uh, this outside loop, hit E to extrude and push it to the side like this and uh, start moving these vertices to follow that as well. That maybe I can also, I think it's okay on this side to be directly like that. And uh, now I can just select this and here. But uh, this is a triangle and uh, I want to have mostly code. So I'll just push, subdivide that so that I have a code there. And uh, so I can have something like that. I uh, may notice I haven't added any subdivision surfaces on, but uh, if you add that, you can see how that would look. Which I think looks good. Again, let me save over my backups. Okay, so what else do we need? Uh, we need to do the back side. And for that, I'm just going to do a very simple trick uh, to get the back side done. I'm just going to add a solidify modifier. Uh, make sure it's above the subdivision and uh, increase the offset. Something like that. And uh, me first apply the scale and reduce the offset just a bit. I'm also going to first shade it flat so that I can see how everything is flowing. You can see that uh, uh, we have a few issues here. We just want to have a very smooth uh, transition. You can see that these vertices are being pushed in. That's why I enabled uh, cavity maps. Uh, that way you can see where your cavities are and your troughs are. So I can select these vertices, use Alt S to push them out just a bit. Select these, push them out. 
everywhere you see that pushing and uh, you don't think it's supposed to be there you can just select them and push use alt s to push them out just like so you can see now we are getting a better flow of what we have what we want i can also i think I th this should also push be pushed out so uh, accept these bottom parts so alt s uh, including this middle okay something like what I may come back to that later right now let's first uh, work on this yeah so we have the solidify modifier and uh, you just apply that this shade smooth uh, for now and you can see now for the back side you can see how that looks uh, again we just use alt s to push the vertices out where we see that pushing uh, if it's not uh, there in our reference so I can select these vertices and push them out like that push them out like that so so that we just have a smoother view and uh, you can see we have this inside line here uh, that's because we apply the solidify modifier before uh, the mirror modifier so I'm just going to select these faces make sure i delete them and uh, move the vertices in into the mirror so that they are merged i think what i'm going what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this edge loop here ctrl x so that we have a more smooth transition there so and maybe also remove this here but uh, now we have uh, this end good so i'm just going to do that to remove to remove that yeah so in the next part we'll continue from there